everybody. So if we take two propellers and we spin one clockwise and one anti-clockwise on two separate axles, that's counter-rotation. A <laughs> big whoop! If we put those both on the same axle, that's contra-rotation. Even bigger whoop! What's the use of that? Well, turns out, if you do that, you make it more mechanically complex because you've got a couple of gearing in there that you need to put so you can actually get them to do that, but they are better at transmitting the power of a motor and they're more efficient at their job, somewhere between 6 and 16% more efficient, and that's why you find them on aeroplanes, and that's where they've lived, aeroplanes and torpedoes mostly. However, Dyson, who, to be honest, is something of a genius, had a look at this. He was in fact thinking about washing machines, and they were trying to come up with a better washing machine. And during the research period, what they found is if you wash clothes for 15 minutes, it's actually better than if you put them in a washing machine for 67 minutes. And this was to do with the way that you actually washed them when you washed them by hand. Because who really wants to wash things for 15 minutes by hand? You don't want to do it. So we put them in a machine. We put up with the fact that it's 67 minutes because your contact time is so much lower. You just put them in and press the button and go away and make a cup of tea. You don't have to stand by a riverbank thrashing them on a rock. And so we put up with it. Anyway. He had a look at that, and he was astounded by that, and what they discovered was, if you used contra-rotation, you could mimic hand-washing that much better, and of course, he produced the CR1. And the CR1 lasted for about four years, but it was troubled by uh, engineering problems. It basically leaked like a sieve after a couple of weeks, and he spent a fortune on service calls. But that basic idea of contra-rotation in a washing machine was brilliant. Nowadays, of course, if we revisited it, particularly if you're looking at things like uh, motors on the rim rather than motors on an axle, then contra-rotation could most certainly be a way forward for improving a washing machine. I mean, running it for 15 minutes instead of 67 minutes? I mean, come on, how much less energy and water are you going to use in that washing machine than you are in the washing machines that we currently use? Because uh, that's fascinating stuff, and I may well revisit it because I am fascinated by washing machines. <laughs> that watching grass grow and paint dry, they're amongst my hobbies. But the real thing that I'm interested in, of course, is wind and wind generation. I don't even remember video 1867 when we made this. It's a simple Savonius turbine, and now that's not the point of it. The point of it was we stuck the magnets on the rim and the coil on the bottom, and we looked at generation on the rim and we were opposing it against generation on the axle. So we made that in video 1867, and of course that is going to be super easy to make contra-rotating. So what I did, print another one, they're identical, okay? If we turn that round that way though, then it becomes the mirror image of this one. So if we stick that on there like that, put that in the wind, that should rotate that way, and this one should rotate in completely the opposite way. So that is exactly what we're going to do and see if it has any effect. So we discussed this in 1867, but we built this in video 1868, which I've linked to in the back of this video, the end of this video. We tried one of these and we found out we've got about two volts or so. Now, this thing here takes about six volts to light up. So if we can light that up, we're doing a hell of a lot better. And I've rigged it up here with the two sides to spin. Now, they will magnetically lock when they're close enough to each other. So if I apply a fan on this section here, the mag lock will make sure that they both turn in the same direction. If I move the wind to the centre here so it's distributed, one bit hitting this section, the other bit hitting this section, they will contra-rotate. So we're able to look at when they rotate in the same way, which would be like an axial flux, or when they rotate in a contra. Let's have a look at the axial flux rotation first.
to my fans at 2.4 meters per second, you've got the whole thing blasting on here. They're rotating and locked together magnetically, so we've got axial flux and we got nothing. Interesting. Okay, let's move the fan to the center and we'll get it to contra-rotate. So when that fan, same power, same distance, is moved to the centre so that it flows over this but hits this and causes that contra-rotation, we were able to light up the lighting strip, which is pretty awesome, really. So we know it's more than 6 volts and we know that Axial won't do it and we know that a single version won't do it. So having this double version contra-rotating certainly seems to generate quite a lot more. So just to go through that again, because the lights were dim, we had this setup. All we did was take a fan at the same power, same speed, same distance, and we pointed it here. When you point it here, the mag lock between these two means that they both turn in the same direction, and that creates an axial flux generator. When we moved that wind to the centre, then it span in different directions and contra-rotated. So, as far as we're able, we put it under the same test conditions. Now, it's reasonable that this would create some drag while the air was being blown up in here. I can understand that. But, on the whole, the contra-rotation certainly seemed to produce an awful lot more than a single rotation on an axial flux. I mean, granted, when we were running this, it was shaking worse than a drunk clown on a high wire, but, balancing aside, we actually got a pretty good result out of that, and contra-rotation is certainly easy to set up. I'm absolutely fascinated by that washing machine with contra-rotation. The real problem with it was that he was using two motors, and of course you have to time those motors and you double the expense. Basically, it was um, two washing machines bunged back to back. I think in this generation at the rim and driving at the rim, we ought to be able to make that much less complex and I'll certainly be thinking about a less complex contra-rotating washing machine just because it uses so much less power and water but in terms of generation contra-rotation certainly seems to be a way to go anyway I hope you enjoyed the video thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe